Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to share with you why so many games feel so badly optimized recently and some of them even considered broken, especially these two here, The Last of Us and Jedi Survivors. And I know a lot of people say, oh, it's because of lazy developers, developers being lazy, they don't want to optimize the games, that's all their fault. And I was thinking, how is it even possible? And my guess, when people say lazy developer, they usually mean like a guy sitting by the computer not wanting to do the job. But I think lazy developer is just a lazy way of describe very complex problem. Because developer is a big company. Like Naughty Dog is 500 people that get paid a lot. They cannot be lazy, like YouTube cannot be lazy, Amazon cannot be lazy. Maybe they have a bad management, I guess that's a possibility. But other than that, I, I can't even imagine them being lazy. Maybe a publisher being stingy, not wanting to pay them enough or giving impossible uh, little time to finish the game. Yes, that's a possibility. The thing is, the games are already crazy expensive to make. Like even now, the games cost quarter of a, me a billion to make the game and soon gonna cost one billion. So you have a big responsibility because you need to finish the game on time, you promise, you sign the contract and maybe the publisher can extend the time, but maybe not. And not every game can make money. Even the best games on the market can lose money if you overspend. So it's not as simple, but that all this doesn't explain why of a sudden, such a big spec requirement for all this game, like suddenly we need such a powerful machine to run those games. The thing is, publishers slowly drop in support for PlayStation 4, which is very old machine. Now, the weakest machine is at the moment is Series S, and even this little guy has quite powerful CPU. And it's not even powerful, but people have weaker CPU than this. This is 8-core, 3800 or 3700, about and people usually run a six or even four core CPU. So on PC, you usually have everything stronger than on console. And I don't understand why people suddenly think that if they have weaker CPU, weaker NVMe drive and less uh, VRAM and still can have better performing games than on console. That's not how it works. You usually have to pay on top of that PC performance tax to have those games perform as well as on consoles. And one big bottleneck on PC or limitation is VRAM limitation. And I know a lot of people said, oh, we have eight gigabytes for so long and it was plenty and look at these games and that game that looks so good. Yes, eight gigabyte is a lot, but more is better and more optimal. And as you can see, if the game gets more, it can utilize more and run better. Another big limitation on PC is direct storage. There's only one game at the moment using direct storage. And when you CPU bottleneck, it can perform way better, a big jump in, jump in performance. And as you can see, CPU bottleneck can happen very low, at very low utilization. That's also, I think a lot of people are not aware of that, that CPU bottleneck can happen even at 20% of utilization. And it happens before because Games cannot use all cores at the same time. And look at this, this CPU over here is one of the best gaming CPU and it's way weaker than some other CPUs. But because how it is optimized for games, it can perform better. So how it works on a console? On consoles, the whole NVMe, fast NVMe drive, generation four, can be used as RAM because of direct storage or Kraken on uh, PlayStation 5. And all this data can be fed to GPU directly. When on PC, you need a lot of CPU power to first move to system RAM. So system RAM is not an advantage of PCs, it's like necess necessity. And then move to the GPU when needed. Much slower, much heavier. And that's why you need very heavy CPU because you need way stronger CPU than on consoles. And remember, well-optimized games on console means everything is pushed to the limit, to the 100%. When on PC, people expect that well-optimized games use as little, like 5% of the CPU, which is crazy. So why do you need such a fast NVMe drive? Well, what's the reason? Well, it's not just for loading times. M most games don't have loading times anymore. They usually have data streaming. And I think that's the best visualization I could find when a game load data constantly, 
like on the fly. And you on PC, that's why you need very strong CPU because it cannot do direct storage just yet. So the new games are coming like Immortals of Avium. And look at that, the specification for this game. You need eight core CPU and beefy GPU with enough VRAM to run those games at 1440p 60 FPS. And that's medium high. That's not even super high. So I think this is the new normal if you want the game to perform as good as on a PlayStation 5. But this game I'm really waiting for is Silent Hill 2. And look at the specs. So CPU is not crazy. It's, it's okay, but it's not crazy. But GPU is quite beefy, you know, especially he, this one. And what you get for, for that? Well, it's medium settings or high quality preset at 30 FPS 1080p guys so if you want 60 fps double the performance and 40 40p almost double as well that's be will be very beefy very high-end uh, pc to run these games at normal resolution and normal graphical setting and just 60 fps so guys that's the reality i think every game will be like that that's the new normal and um, because we don't have playstation 4 games anymore like resident evil 4 was the last one we need beefy hardware now to run those games all right i hope your pc is ready because mine is not ready at the moment okay thanks for watching